Is this peace of mind or is it a piece of sh This is the STZ RF 200 WD Motorsports Cam from Kenwood. Today we're going to cover install, setup in the app, as well as take it out on the road so I can show you what the footage looks like. So in the box, the main system components are going to be the two cameras, the GPS, the switch, the harness, as well as the brain box here as well as sticky pads, zip ties, and a 32 gigabyte SD card. The cameras are full HD at 1920 by 10 E. Now they both have an effective viewing angle of 181 degrees with their one over 2.7 inch CMOS sensor, as well as features like HDR, electronic image stabilization, and an IP66, slash 67 rating. The recording can be triggered either manually by this button or in the event of a crash, it'll use the G sensor to trigger the recording as well. This does record in the, the standard H.264 format, but at an odd 27 and a half frames per second. Now let's move on to the installation. I want to install the Kenwood system underneath the pairing of this motorcycle just because there's not a whole lot of room left underneath the seat. I have ABS, so there's no room underneath the right side panel. So the fairing is the best option. I know it doesn't look like it, but there actually is a ton of space underneath this fairing. The best spot I found for this brain box though, that fits almost perfectly, is right underneath here. This unit comes with that VHB tape the problem with mounting it permanently underneath the fairing, even in a position like this, is the memory card comes out of here. So you may have a problem accessing it. I put the hook and loop tape on and I'm going to be putting the unit right underneath here. I'm going to put this in the wrong way right now just so I can show you how well it fits underneath in this area. There, look at this. There's no interference, clearance for your gauge, clearance for your vent everything works out mint right there on these road glides there's a gps module over here for the harley davidson unit as well as a spot over here that harley graciously put another metal attachment area now that we're at this stage we can start running the wires for the cameras to do this properly you're gonna have to remove your seat and your tank from the motorcycle if you want to run it down the backbone know that people do run it under just tuck them up underneath the tank to the underneath the seat but that's not the way we do things around here okay this is the backbone where all the wiring is ran for this motorcycle that comes from the front back here these are fairly simple they're just little clips as you can see here the only thing if you haven't dug into this before there will be tape right here that you need to cut you need to slide this brake hose out here up here all the way first okay this one these two and then slide it forward now on the kenwood unit you can see that we have gps switch power rear and front camera so the one we need to find is the power all right so now we'll connect this and then undo this and we'll know how much cord we need to add to the power and ground you can really ground it in the fairing you for anything audio video anything like that you're going to want to keep the ground as short as possible the power wire i tapped it into the battery uh, put a different little fuse on here because i wanted to have the fuse down here obviously not underneath the fairing when i ran the wire i wrapped it in tessa tape just so there wasn't a red wire possibly sticking out then the wiring comes out right here this is my power wire i grounded it over here with a separate nut that i had you can see the unit is mounted underneath here wires come out here so here's my key on power right here i wrapped it also in tessa tape runs down 
to right here follows the 12 volt outlet wiring and what i did was trigger it by this 12 volt socket once you turn your ignition on then this has power what i used was in a this is actually the ground side but what i used was the spade terminal adapter that has a female as well as an offshoot for a male side i have the camera mounted here runs under the tail light runs to your strut here runs underneath the strut here i don't think i'll be able to get it but you might be able to see it in here runs along here hidden comes out here and then runs up the backbone you can see the connector right there all right so with all that done now all i have left to do is run the front camera as well as the switch okay one thing that i really struggled with was the placement of this activation button this is your record button didn't want to drill a hole in the fairing i wanted it within quick easy reach being that i'm right-handed i didn't want to put it on the right side all right so that's it all I need to do is put the fairing back on and mount this camera. We will go over the app and any other stuff like the test ride after I get that done. Okay, camera's installed underneath the fairing. I ran it out the same hole that you use to adjust your headlight. Now we need to move on to the app because we need to check and make sure that the view that we're looking at when these cameras record is correct. Now that we're done with the install, now it's time to go to your respective app store and download the Kenwood Motorsports app. So the first thing we're gonna do from here is we're going to turn your ignition to accessory. From there, we're gonna click on the app. The app is gonna start up and this is the screen that you're gonna see. Then we're gonna move on to the button that we installed and hold that button for three seconds honestly it's generally longer than that it's around five seconds just hold the button until the lights start flashing now because we held that button and i've set this up previously it just automatically connected then from there we can move on to if we need to adjusting the image angle adjustment if you click the here it's gonna connect. Let's turn the phone sideways. And now we see the front camera and it is cocked because the motorcycle is sitting on the jiffy stand. So here's the front. If we needed to adjust this, we could monitor this while adjusting the camera. Then if you need to do the rear, you can click the rear and adjust that one as well. Now here's where Kenwood loses me because there's no way to monitor the cameras while it's recording. When you're connected to the Wi-Fi, these are the things you can do. You can download files from the camera and everything, but you can't monitor the camera, which kind of sucks. Like if you want to have this up on your handlebars so you can monitor what's going on behind you so you don't become a motorcycle sandwich, you can't do that. You can only review it afterwards now let's see what kind of footage we got from this thing starting off with the front camera you can see it's really very shaky this can be attributed to it being mounted on the fairing but no real form of securement in that area the plastic must flex and vibrate a lot because if you look at the road it was repaved about a year ago this issue i think can be solved through better placement and i say that because if we move to the rear camera that was mounted to the taillight there's little to no vibration and none of that jello-like effect. As far as audio is concerned, in my opinion, it's pretty unusable, but oddly, the audio is 32-bit audio, according to DaVinci Resolve. This final video clip I wanna share with you shows that this really isn't a great option in the event you need to read a license plate from the footage. The plate is completely unreadable from 10 feet away. Honestly, I think this whole thing was a failure before it even launched. And this isn't something 
I'm going to recommend to you guys. And honestly, I would even go as far as saying avoid this product since it's really not very good at anything it's supposed to do. Now, Kenwood obviously thinks so as well. I mean, they halved the cost of this from 400 when it launched down to $200 and in some cases even less in certain places. Now, the only positive that I can even imagine for this system is if it was to survive an accident it and you were able to recover the footage at least that way you could have evidence of who is at fault for an accident because we sure as hell know that you're not getting the license plate number of that car if it's a hit and run all right guys that's it for this one that's my thoughts and opinions on this product i want to thank you guys for watching and remember at v twinkie we build them to ride